Oh my goodness. Wait, did both of them just ban their opponent's even shaman once again? Yes, both of them have even shaman banned out. That is a lot of respect to that deck. Time to be alive. Yeah, but we're getting into game number one. It is the Odd Rogue Mirror. And both of these players look like they've got fairly decent hands to work with. So between uh, both Bunny Hopper and Kalento, are there any significant uh, differences between their deck lists that we can see from the uh, deck lists provided here? So if we're looking at the Odd Rogue specifically, uh, because that's the current matchup we have access to, I don't think there are that many differences in the list. I think one of the major notable differences, at least for this matchup, is going to be that Bunny Hopper has access to King uh, Mukla, whereas Kalento has Void Ripper. So, you know, not the two most impactful cards. Both of those aren't, you know, the strongest. But in certain situations, they can definitely play their respective roles. But other than that, they're pretty similar card for card. I'd say probably about 28 to 29 cards similar. Both players having access right off the bat to that Deadly Poison. Deadly Poison, such an important card in this matchup. It just allows the dagger to actually trade efficiently with the two mid-range threats. So any of those three threes or even the um, Bilespawn Slayer, it lines up very nicely with that. So very fortunate for both these players. Uh, in general, do you think that there is a very big difference between uh, who is on the coin and who isn't on the coin in this matchup, Chase? I think typically being on the play is more beneficial as you will have access to, you know, getting down that one drop immediately in order to, you know, kind of put that pressure on. You also have, you know, just quicker access to things like uh, Hench Clan Thug and Vicious Fledgling because Hench Clan Thug isn't one of those minions you really want to coin out unless you have very strong follow up. So I think for Kalento, missing that one drop is pretty detrimental, but overall, it's going to be a very back-and-forth close game. And uh, I might be wrong, but I believe that Kalento also kept the Deadly Poison, uh, same as Bunny Hopper. Just yes. Understanding how important it is in this matchup, and uh, it's it's important enough that you even risk missing that one drop to begin with. Uh, bumping into the Divine Shield here with the Dagger, uh, that's, you know, the Dagger, even though it it's, it's essentially free, it costs a lot to actually commit that swing, especially with a Deadly Poison in your hand. Yeah, but the the reason Deadly Poison is just so strong in this matchup is because it allows you to clear off two mid-range sized threats, and Odd Rogue doesn't, you know, spam the board like something like Odd Pound or Zulok would do. So it allows you to clean up minions like Hench Clan Thug, there's also Vicious Fledgling, even just, you know, simple three drops like Blood Knight, you can clear off two minions for the price of one dagger. And just being able to do that just shows, like, you know, how powerful of a keep that was for Kalento and Bunny Hopper. So that's why I said this game's going to be back and forth. But these players have access to those removals they need. Kalento already being forced to make a very important decision here. Which three drops out of your three drops do you want to play? And uh, whatever three drops he plays has a snowballing implications for the rest of the game. So he decides to go with the Hench Clan Thug here. And I think either way, Bunny Hopper is kind of forced to uh, play the Deadly Poison anyway. So um, it's either way, I think that they're both going to be getting cleared by Bunny Hopper uh, due to that Deadly Poison. Again, one of the most important cards in the matchup. Um, I think after that, like Vile Spine Slayer maybe, especially on the coin, we're saving a one drop for it on turn six to play the one drop together to combo the Vile Spine Slayer. Uh, they're, they're the kind of swings that you're looking for in a matchup like this. Yeah, we can see this important swing here. Unfortunately for a Kalento, because he had to use the dagger to clear off that one drop earlier since he didn't have his own one drop, he's not going to be able to clean up this Hench Clan Thug and develop a minion like he would like to do so. So he's, he's just going to have to be forced to Hero Power Deadly Poison, clean it up, hope the response from Bunny Hopper is not that strong. That way he can try and get something onto the board. But it's still looking pretty back and forth. Neither of these players have, you know, that strong of follow-up plays, especially because Deadly Poison is, you know, on both of these daggers right now. 
Oh man, you know one of the worst feelings is seeing your opponent with the uh, with with a weapon that just kills your next thing and deciding which one <laughs> to just toss into the volcano as a sacrifice. You know what I mean? Like, which one do you pick? But um, I guess essentially, if you play like an SI seven agent, you don't feel that bad because you kind of you know quote unquote got value off of the battle cry already. The uh, sorry, not the battle cry, the uh, combo effect already. Um. But he is still going to tank because, you know, keeping the SI7 agent, even though uh, the Blood Knight is very good versus uh, versus the Giggly Inventor, the SI7 agent, the two damage is good against everything as well. So which one do you want to play? Like, yeah, you, you have to play one of them, I'm pretty sure. You have to play one of them. Yeah, I think you want to go for the SI7 because the Blood Knight is more important for getting through Giggling Inventor, which could be a potential 5 drop for Kalento. Both of these lists, another stark difference, I believe they're 27 cards the same. One of the stark, most stark differences is that Kalento is not actually running Tark Reapers, where Funny Hopper is. So Funny Hopper does not have to worry about Tark Reapers in this matchup. The okay. most he has to worry about Tom Wise's Giggling Inventor. And with that knowledge, Bunny Hopper can push through lots and lots of damage and end the game with some kind of Leroy Cold Blood play. So he's really, really close to ending this game just outright in the next couple of turns if Kalento's not very careful or finds something like a Giggling Inventor. So holding on to that Blood Knight is going to give him that out to be able to clean it up pretty efficiently. Pretty fortunate as well for Bunny Hopper, I think, because... Because at this point in the game, uh, Kalento certainly is outvaluing Bunny Hopper. You know, with just a few one drops, he will get the Vile Spine Slayer off. Uh, Bunny Hopper is basically out of stuff, but as you said, he does have potential for that Leroy Cold Blood combo to end the game. So at this point, um, Kalento is definitely going to be playing as the, the control player, just trying to figure out ways to stay alive. And for the most part, you know, this deck doesn't have that many great ways to stay alive. Especially not with his hand, so it's gonna be a hard one, I think, for Kalento to stabilize here. He's he's gonna need some help from his deck. Yeah, he's definitely gonna need some help, but right now all Bunny Hopper really has to do is push through just a little bit more damage. If he sets up a dagger this turn and kind of pushes through the damage there, next turn he will have a set up lethal with the Leroy Cold Blood. So Bunny Hopper is gonna have to be very careful to think about how he wants to navigate this. He could go for the Giggling Inventor. Overall, I think that's, you know, probably stronger than going for the dagger play as it does give you some minions to contest maybe potentially a follow-up Giggling Inventor. It also, you know, kind of stops this Vicious Fledgling from ever connecting, which he's not too concerned with. But I do like the Giggling Inventor here. It's not really weak to that many cards. Even if your opponent plays Blood Knight, you just have Lethal on the following turn. I Yeah, so it is between the Giggling Inventor or the Blood Knight Dagger play. And I think if you are going to Dagger, you are going to just go ahead and trade off this Vicious Fledgling in case uh, Kalento gets something like Taunt. Uh, but, yeah, so he's gonna go ahead and go with the Giggly and Inventor. Uh, there's no clean answer here from Kleno yet. Oh, Cold Blood, that's not gonna be- wait, uh, Cold Blood's a one-drop, but it's not gonna be quite enough, even with the Vile Spine Slayer, to get Kleno out of this one. Is there any way that Kleno can actually stay alive here, Jace? Uh, I don't think so that I can see. There's nothing really he can do. I mean, he could potentially play out something like the Vile Spine or the SI7, but he's going to be taking too much damage from that Giggling Inventor. All that Bunny Hopper needs to connect through is three, and there is no way that he clears up two. The only potential draw for him was Blood Knight. He would be able to Blood Knight and then uh, SI7 Agent the Giggling Inventor and then take a trade with the Vicious Fledgling. But even then, you'd only be alive by one, and you still don't have that follow up to you know end the game so right now bunny hopper just playing to his out setting up that lethal as quickly as possible and is going to end this game with the leroy code blood leroy jenkins coming in for another win i think that i think leroy jenkins is actually the card that made me start playing hearthstone with the sound off because <laughs> this battle cry i cannot take it you know what i mean i can't take this battle cry i can't take it uh bunny hopper Seals the deal. And they're very good. Like, poker faces. Oh, yeah. Poker faces, poker faces are uh, something that all these players are good at. They're very, 
you know, serious about their play, very deep in thought. You really can't blame them. There's a lot on the line. I mean, there is a Aston Martin on the line. So, I mean, I'd be deep in my uh, my thoughts if I was. I don't know. Maybe I'd be too distracted by saying, "Oh my gosh, I could, <laughs> I, could I, I could be driving that in the next couple of weeks. I could be driving." That. Yeah, but think about Hearthstone players that we're always inside anyways, you know? Like, where do we need to go anyways? But, uh, yo, the next game is has started. Uh, Bunny Hopper has the Subject 9 in his hand. So in a deck like Subject 9 Hunter, do you always keep this card, Dr. J? Um, I think this might be too, sl- too fast of a matchup to warrant keeping it. I honestly think that, you know, although Subject 9 is a very powerful card, it's kind of what the deck is named after. I don't necessarily think it's one of the cards you would keep because it's a very it's a very slow pace card and I think it's more so for a refill turn that you want to draw off of the top. You don't really want to, you know, keep that in your mulligan just to try and hopefully get that later on. So I definitely like Bunny Hopper's keep here of just the Seeker Keeper and the Snake Trap. Wow, a very nice start here for both players. I think it's a little bit easier for the Odd Rogue to have a better start, you know, like just some sort of one drop into either the Dagger or Coin out of three is very nice. But for Bunny Hopper, he has uh, both of the best one drops in his deck, followed by Secret and Animal Companion. So, um, and arguably, I think Snake Trap, I'm not sure exactly what other secrets Bunny Hopper is running, but the Snake Traps is really nice because you do have to fight for board in this matchup. Uh, for the most part, so just getting three one ones at any point is just terrific in either racing or trading with your opponent. Yeah, and I actually really like this play from Kalento. He gets rid of the secret keeper before any kind of secret can be developed. Also, you know, just making sure he has that dagger online. He does have follow up with a double one drop, so he's not too worried about you know coining out one of the three drops, especially because you know it's not that strong in this matchup, especially if that Seeker Keeper goes, you know, uncontested. The one thing that Bunny Hopper is going to need in the next couple of draws is something like Spellstone. You know, this deck is pretty powerful when it has Spellstone, but when it doesn't, sometimes it just falls flat. Yeah, sometimes I feel like all of these Hunter decks are are like Spellstone decks. So you have two Spellstones, and then you have Rexar in there, and then you just fill the deck with other random stuff, and yeah, that's just kind of good enough. Um, but again, showcasing just how powerful the spellstone is. Uh, so Bunny Hopper looking to not just give up the Secret Keeper straight away for, to the Dagger Charge. He's gonna try to play it in the same turn of the Secret. It's pretty clever. Yeah, I really like that recognition. No reason to kind of just forfeit it over to that Dagger Charge. Uh, can you know he doesn't really have that follow up next turn anyways. He could play Animal Companion. But playing out the Secret Keeper alongside the Snake Trap seems like overall just a you know a much more powerful play. But with the Crackling Razor Maw picked up off the top, it's got some decisions to be had. This is definitely a tough turn. I would like to see the Secret Keeper plus the Snake Trap, but you can't blame him for thinking about all of the potential options. Sure. Hmm. In a matchup like this, it just showcases exactly why the odd rogue hero power is so good. Because dealing two damage, I mean, obviously two damage is better than one damage. But the way that it lines up into these early game creatures and the damage that it just pushes to the face. So like four damage for two mana instead of two damage for two mana. uh, It is just so good at doing everything you want in an aggressive deck that can can out control other uh, aggressive decks. See your keeper coming down. Snake trap gets put up as we expected. Um, This is uh, extremely awkward for Kalento. Kalento's gonna have to figure this out. He's gonna have to figure it out. And I think snake trap is actually the worst case scenario. He. He is, he's he's gonna have a hard time here. He's gonna have a hard time here. Um, another option he has is to potentially just gamble and hope that it's actually not a snake trap and for him to just go face. But I think that's also a little bit ambitious to let the Seeker Keeper do whatever it wants. It is a little ambitious, but having both one twos on the board does make the snake trap you know, not sure. that strong of a play. Typically, it would have been very strong into what, you know, Odd Rogue has to offer. However, Kalento having two pretty good value traits here 
and even being able to reset up the dagger for the following turn alongside playing another two drop. And then we'll have just very strong plays in the future while Bunny Hopper's hand is, you know, kind of lacking at this point. He doesn't have access to a very strong follow up right now. Yeah, this is, a, this is a game deciding play already here. And I it looks like Kalento. Oh, man. Is Kalento. Oh, man. So Kalento's going to opt to uh, go for the South Sea deck hand and probably the SI7 next turn. Um, here he's hoping to not see another secret plus a. Uh, plus a good play alongside that secret. Bunny Hopper does have a little bit more gas though. Um, it's pretty deceptive sometimes just how much stuff the Hunter I feel can have, even though uh, they're relatively low on cards, just because a lot of their cards are just so impactful. It's very compact, the mana costs. Yeah, Bunny Hopper is forced to tracking there. Doesn't, uh, you know, tracking a very powerful card is it allows him to kind of keep getting that you know, resource flow going. He's got a couple mm -hmm. of different, you know, options here. I think he really wants to try and fight for the board somehow. But if he just plays out his minions and they keep just kind of, you know, dying to some of the Kalento's cards here with the SI7 agent and the South Sea deckhand, he, he's going to need something here. I mean, I think still going back to the early game decision where Bunny Hopper had a one drop, a secret, and also the a subject nine... I, I I think it's very interesting that's uh, to discuss whether or not it's worth keeping it because it looks like he is going to run out of stuff soon if uh, Kalento can deal with his board. And I think that he can deal with the board now uh, with the help of Salsi Deccan and SI7 agents. Yeah, he does have a very clean answer to this. Can even answer the Secret Keeper, Secret Keeper as well. This is looking like a pretty good turn. You see there, Subject 9, he didn't keep it in the mulligan. Does have a 5% chance to draw it. Uh, this is, uh, he's going to need something here. I, I, Kill Command is definitely not that. This is where this Secret Hunter falls flat. It, it, when it doesn't have, you know, either the Rexar to keep building that beast, or it doesn't have that Spellstone to apply the pressure to end the game, then you really see the weakness in this deck. Not many decisions here to be had from Bunny Hopper. Can, you know, go ahead and kill Command the SI7 agent. But if he does that, I mean, what else is he really doing? Yeah, I think he's hoping for some sort of, uh, some sort of value generation tool from his deck. Do we know if Bunny Hopper is running a Death, Death Stalker Rexar? I believe Bunny Hopper is. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, in these lists there is Deathstalker Rexar. I'll go ahead and confirm have to, right? it. Uh, yeah. You really have to because it's one of your win conditions against something like Warrior. I'd say Warrior isn't, you know, brought to too much, but it, it's brought enough that you'd have to, con you know, consider playing. It's also just a very powerful card overall and what it can yeah. do in certain matchups. So I think something like a Deathstalker Rexar coming off the top is going to be the start to come back. But again, it's going to be very hard because even though Deathstalker Rexar is very good, if you don't get a very uh, valuable consecration effect off of Rexar's battle cry, then it's going to be a lot of mana being sunk into finding uh, stuff that is uh, normally costed because all of the be beasts that you build they're, you have to pay the full value for all of them. And in addition to the hero power, in addition to the six mana of the Rexar plays, it's very slow, especially versus an aggressive deck that is always pressing the issue every single turn. So here, Hound Master, the Hound Master Shaw off the top, he does have the ability to rush it with the, um, with the Kathleen Razor mob, but it's not that valuable. And then the 6-6 six, six gets a very clean trade into the Shaw. So not exactly what he's looking for, but he's trying to figure out how he can play to his outs. Yeah, there's not really much that he can do here. He's going to really need something. He sets up the explosives just to try and, you know, take away a little bit of the pressure here from those 1-1s. One Obviously, you know, they're not presenting too large of a threat, but he needs to, you know, mitigate the board state somehow. 
I mean, right now, he's really relying on finding something like Deathstalker Rexar. He's at a pretty healthy life total, but that is just going to get chipped away turn after turn if he doesn't find, you know, something here. I think even tracking is kind of a, you know, just something to keep himself going. I, I can't stress how much... I can't stress enough how important it is to, you know, find that gas, especially in a deck where there's not much gas to be had. Yeah. Well, a very good board here for Kalento. Three insanely scary threats that have to all be dealt with at the same time with, um, you know, a charging 3-3 three, three at your disposal. Um, well, he does have the opportunity to roll the Animal Companion. Uh, if it is a Huffer, okay, so he has a chance to charge that in if he wants with the Shaw, but really the best thing that he can do is a value trade on the 3-3. Three, three. You don't really just want to take a single trade just because all of these things are pretty threatening, but then the 4-1 just gets traded off to by the Dagger. It's it's just it's just not looking very good for Bunny Hopper. Um, Yeah, it's looking really rough right now for Bunny Hopper. I think he has to go for this value trade because he can't really afford for that vicious fledgling to connect. But there is so much damage coming from the other side. Uh, the question is, how much does uh, Kalenta respect this Houndmaster Shaw? Is he just going to go ahead and ignore it, try and push as much damage as quickly as possible? Or does he have, you know, just that big of a respect for it to answer it now? That way, you know, it doesn't kind of reset the board state. Yeah, I think that one of the ways I guess your opponent comes back is going to be some sort of random shot thing. I don't know what that random shot thing is because uh, I don't think two charging, uh, you know, minions from Bunny Hopper's side is really going to do the trick either. But it's such a clean value trade with the 6-4 that I'll, I'll be very surprised if Kalento doesn't just take it. Um, there is the punish of the Death Sucker Rexer coming down, though. Um, clearing up the... Be a Blood Knight if he does go with the value trade, but oh, he reaches for the he reaches for the Void Ripper. Okay, so what's the Void Ripper going to be doing here? Oh, the Void Ripper in conjunction with the Dagger and the Deadly Poison can actually make him allow him to face tank the uh, Shaw instead. Wow, that's quite clever. Yeah, very clever play coming out from Kalento. He found a way to respect it. The only thing this doesn't allow him to do is you know have that strong of an answer for say some kind of large minion that bunny hopper can present but he understands that right now you know this subject nine hunter doesn't really have any large minions to present so this vile spine the most it's probably going to do is potentially get through some kind of taunt so for bunny hopper here he does rip the uh, subject nine off the top and if he does so he's going to pull a wandering monster as well is there any sort of wandering monster random uh, three mana minion that can save bunny hopper here is there anything in the game there's got to be something right there's always something three drop that would be fairly strong i, I guess there is the defender i believe is what yeah, it's the called two, eight. the uh -huh. the three mana two eight but even then you know it's not really uh it's not really getting you anywhere right now Kalento through watering monster is two off lethal i mean could be uh is backstreet leper still in the rotation i completely forgot about that card i don't think it is so uh, i think kalento what he's worried about right now is that he either face tanks this damage or he commits the 3-3 and it's some kind of minion that gives bunny hopper enough burn to potentially end the game with hero powers i think that's what kalento is worried about right now and why he thought so long on the dagger swing and he goes for it. He goes ahead and hits his face with a cave hydra coming off, uh, coming off the wandering monster. That is not going to be doing it. A two attack uh, minion is the best case scenario, probably for Kalento. Something with, without divine shield, something that doesn't have a, a lingering effect, something that he doesn't have to sink more damage into. Um, and again, as you said, he's just looking for a way to not die here while. Uh, while just continuing to threaten the board. Yeah, he also needed to play out that uh, Vile Spine just in case there were something like Deathstalker Rexar into uh, some kind of potential threat. Uh, looks like that's, uh, that's 
not going to be enough for Bunny Hopper there. And Kalento is going to tie up the series one to one. And that just goes to show you how finicky sometimes that secret hunter, you know, that subject nine hunter is. And also, that game was, you know, a lot closer than I expected from the opening hands. Um, Hunter just being able to deal so much damage, just random damage over the course of the game that oftentimes you'll be in a situation like Kalento where you, you just see yourself sitting at 10 HP. Right now, it's looking like it's going to be Subject 9 Hunter versus, uh, versus Zulok, which I would say typically is fairly strong for the Subject 9 Hunter as it does have you know, a lot of that early game removal tools. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you know, this is a matchup that I don't see quite often just because this is a secret hunter. I actually don't see secret hunter quite often, that often. But uh, yeah, it does seem like all of the consecration effects with the explosive traps and the Deathstalker Rexar, it does seem like you have to be very careful how you stagger the board as a Zulok. But um, on the flip side of that, that card in Bunny Hopper's hand right there, the Fungal Enchanter, man, that card's got to be a nuisance in this matchup because, like, a lot of times you can probably attack into an Explosive Trap and then, uh, and then just heal up your guys afterwards while you're making your war Light Ward in like a, a hundred attack. You know what I mean? <laughs> definitely, you know, a balancing act there. You're definitely right with that. As we can see here, Bunny Hopper's got a fairly strong, you know, just opening hand. He's got. Just, you know, two three drops that can go ahead and go coin three drop into three drop. He's got the Kobold Librarian to, you know, contest this Secret Creeper quite a bit. Kalento right now doesn't have the strongest of hands as he's kind of forced to play out the explosive just to try and uh, buff up the Secret Creeper so it doesn't immediately die to this Kobold yeah. Librarian, but... He goes for it. He's going to go for it. So he's going for healing his uh, face, playing a zero man at 3-3, three, three, and just taking the board. How do you feel about that, Dr. J? Uh, you know, out of all the plays that could have been had that turn, I think that's probably one of the stronger plays. <laughs> I mean, I've seen I've seen some, you know, flame imps with this board state, or maybe another happy ghoul, but a very <laughs> strong opener, especially because there's not much that you know, Kalento can really do to answer this. One weakness of this Subject 9 Hunter is that it's not actually uh, running Candle Shot. And Candle Shot is one of those you know, very high impact cards that, uh, you know, you wouldn't think of it too much, but being able to clear up these two ones constantly with that, uh, with the charge of the Candle Shot, really makes a difference in this game. Wow. I'm really surprised to hear that Candle Shot was cut. Just because Candle Shot, in, it it has its uses in almost every matchup. And as you said, in this matchup, it's usually a three for one. And I mean, you, this is like the most value you can ever get out of a one mana card. But uh, the Secret Keeper growing to be a two, three, taking a value trade is also pretty good. You know what I mean? He, he got to double dip with uh, his one drop. So it's quite nice. But the downside to this is that he had to commit the explosive trap already, which you really want to save that to time it for when your opponent is, you know, like pretty wide on the board, having a lot of small stuff. But, um, you know, Bunny Hopper might not expect an explosive trap coming out this early. Yeah, so the reason, you know, Kalenta really took that value trade was just to, you know, mitigate some of that, you know, board damage. And right now we see Bunny Hopper trying to play around the secrets by taking that value trade there. It's definitely a tough call because Kalento really thought about whether to play the uh, explosive trap or not because he's trying to do some mind game shenanigans against Bunny Hopper where if he plays the explosive trap, he forces Bunny Hopper to play around these secrets, secrets very awkwardly. And we see there that he played around them so awkwardly that he left both of these minions to technically die to the explosive trap if it wasn't for the fungal enchanter. Uh, I mean, the thing about the secrets from Hunter, it... It always makes everything awkward, you know? Like, it's awkward for your opponent, it's awkward for you, because you don't want to play stuff into their minions, because you want their minions to die from the explosive trap. Um, so, uh, the uh, the main difference, I think, is that uh, it's up to Kalento to do something, because as time goes on, whenever a Fungal Mancer, whenever it gets into Fungal Mancer turns, whenever it gets into uh, maybe like just dropping a Despicable Dreadlord, for example, it's not going to be as nice for Kalento as it is for Bunny Hopper. So these things can just stick around for as long as Bunny Hopper likes, and uh, 
when Bunny Hopper decides it's time to go, it'll be time to go. Yeah, it's the one thing that uh, a lot of players, you know, they neglect to realize against the Secret Hunter is a lot of times it may be stronger on, say, something like ladder or against some inexperienced players because they don't exactly grasp the concept of playing around these secrets and they try to, you know, play aggressively. Like, we've been told that Zulok is an aggressive deck. You're supposed to kind of, you know, push the damage each turn, whereas Bunny Hopper is taking a very slow approach to saying, you know what, there is no reason to proc this secret. There's no reason to give Kalento value. Might as well keep these minions around now that I know it doesn't matter if I attack a minion and I can use this 3-1 to potentially trade into a wolf. And at this point in time, Bunny Hopper is still unsure whether or not the secret is an explosive trap or a, a wandering monster. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see when exactly Bunny Hopper is interested in uh, proccing the secret. Because the thing is that if it's a wandering monster, for example, the longer he waits, even though he loses, even though it takes a resource off his board to proc the wandering monster, he could be getting in some chip damage that, uh, that could potentially end the game faster for him. That Plenty is true. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, down. yeah, it's a very, very, you know, balancing act for Bunny Hopper here as he has to try and weigh out, you know, how strong is it to kind of leave up his minions. You're exactly right. And, you know, that just goes to show you how powerful of a player Bunny Hopper is, recognizing that, you know, he doesn't need to proc these. He can just kind of, you know, take his time, maybe even get that play you were talking about where he plays the chain gang and then potentially procs it and plays a light warden plus fungal enchanter to make just a massive, massive light warden. But then everything changed when the spellstone appeared. Spellstone, <laughs> my goodness, the spellstone. This card is ridiculous. I think that I would rate this as like one of the most powerful Hearthstone cards ever printed, ever digitally printed. Um, because even though, as you said before, Bunny Hopper could, you know, kind of play it slow, now he has to move a little bit because uh, the spell zone's coming. But, oh my gosh, a Mossy Horror coming off the top as well. So next turn he has that available bar a Fungal Master coming down to change the size of uh, these minions. Yeah, Clint has got to be very wary of that Fungal Mancer, because if Fungal Mancer lands on the, you know, just any kind of board state, that is, you know, there's a reason why it's played in the deck. It is a very powerful card when played on curve, and we can see it right now in Bunny Hopper's hand. Kalento, you know, he could commit to the Spellstone here, but it's only giving him two wolves. And the worst part about that is these wolves just kind of die to the Tar Creeper. They can't even really get through the Tar Creeper that efficiently. Is that two wolves, or is that actually three wolves? <laughs> it's just two. It's oh, just, just two wolves. Two. Okay. Oh, man. And also, if you play the Wolves, uh, Bunny Hopper had some pretty clean trades with a Despicable Dreadlord coming down, uh, just trading off the Voodoo Doctor into one of those, killing off the Residual 3-1. So, Kalento choosing to play around that, and uh, this seems to be a much better outcome for Kalento than playing the Spellstone for a measly two Wolves. Okay, Bunny Hopper had a lot of decisions here. Fungal Manster being, you know... The main one, but, you know, Despicable Dreadlord essentially picks off a free 3-1. That's really hard to, really hard to turn down. Yeah, especially because you can make two trades with the Serenite, and you can also play it cleaning up two of the minions and forcing the Houndmaster to get through on this Dark Reaper. I really like this Despicable Dreadlord play. Despicable Dreadlord. A lot of times you wonder why people cut this card in the first place. This card is ridiculous. It's like essentially well statted already, almost well statted for five mana. And then this effect, it's good versus almost every deck apart from like, well, like Control Warrior or something. Yeah, it's one of those cards that has a lot of merit in the matchups that it's very powerful. It's just also, you know, the five drop slot is very contested because a lot of the times you want to play, you know, Doom Guard on five and you really True. want to mm -hmm. push that damage and if Despicable Dreadlord's in your hand with the Doom Guard, you're, you're going to discard it, so it might as well you know, be one of those lower-costing cards that way you can kind of curve out to the Doom Guard more efficiently. But like you said, Despicable Dreadlord, he's nothing to scoff at. He's still a pretty powerful card. Uh, Dr. J, uh, are my eyes deceiving me? Is that a is that a rat trap in Kalento's hand? Is that a card that, that he put in his deck? That is a rat trap. Uh, no mistake there. Uh, Kalento does have access to rat trap it's a 
you know, it's not the strongest of cards, but the reason why it's in Kalento's list that a lot of people may be wondering, it's not very powerful against, say, matchups like this, but Kalento was kind of hard targeting the Quest Rogues with his lineup, and Rat Trap is one of the cards that Quest Rogue can't really play around. They kind of have to commit to minion, Shadow Step minion a lot of the times, and giving just a free 6-6 six, six out of nowhere ultimately it's just snowball the game out of control so that's why kalento has it in his list wow also you know bunny hopper i think respecting uh the potential of not only wandering monster explosive trap but also the rat trap but he hasn't had the ability maybe but he hasn't uh played three uh three cards in a turn yet um and that just goes to show just how crazy uh or to the extent that Bunny Hopper is respecting these secrets, because if that secret that Kalento played on turn two, buffing up the Secret Keeper, was actually uh, the Rat Trap, then Bunny Hopper missed a ton of damage there, and he could be making a lot of different plays. So, oh man, that's a lot of respect. A lot of respect. Yeah, a lot of respect given to the secrets. I mean, that's sometimes what you really have to do, is you can't afford to just go too haphazardly, especially when... You know, that secret could be just a couple of different things. It could be a rat trap. He's going to see there that it's actually not the rat trap. Ooh. Rexar is actually pretty strong here knowing that yeah. it's explosive. Yeah, that's an explosive trap. The same explosive trap that Bunny Hopper's been trying to play around the entire game. <laughs> um, man, but that was such a nice play from Bunny Hopper as well. Just staggering his threats out. So even if a Deathstalker Rexar came down, it would only be picking off the uh, Light Warden. Um, but as the fungal man, uh, as the as the fungal enchanter came down um, already, there's only one more fungal enchanter in Bunny Hopper's deck. Uh, this fungal mancer, I think, is gonna have to really carry the game, and this might be the point already where Bunny Hopper is no longer allowed to play around any uh, secrets. Yeah, Bunny Hopper has been very careful to try and play around the secrets, but now that he doesn't have access to that fungal enchanter anymore he might just have to throw away the fungal mancer and kind of just hope it's enough he could buff up you know the despicable dreadlord he would be able to push through but even pushing through leaving them at five ones makes it very weak to something like wandering monster plus snake trap and he knows that clento just has plenty of secrets currently in his hand oh my goodness bunny hopper is also playing the mossy horror as well everyone's just jamming mossy horror in every deck aren't they Oh yeah, Mossy Horror is probably the best card in Hearthstone right now. I, I don't think there's a better card. You can't name a better card. You can't convince me that there's a better card besides Mossy Horror. I, it's cards. actually my favorite card, too. What? Mossy it's Horror. your favorite card? I can see it as the best card, but your favorite card, Dr. J? Man. The, my favorite, the best card ever printed in any card game. It's better than the Two of Spades. You changed, bro. You changed. It's, it's better than any card ever printed. Oh my goodness. Mossy Horror, what implications does Mossy Horror have for Bunny Hopper in this matchup? I assume this isn't really the matchup that you're looking to, uh, you know, to rip Bunny, uh, to rip Bunny, to rip Mossy Horror. But, um, man, Bunny Hopper gonna respect once again the secret. Imagine if that was a rat trap. How many, how many of us on ladder would have just attacked in turn two? I think I would have just attacked. Also, I'm impatient. <laughs> I mean, you gotta play patience sometimes. I think he's really waiting for that fungal enchanter. All jokes aside, you know, the Mossy Horror is not the strongest card in this matchup. It's mostly just for those druid matchups that you're really expecting to face. Yeah. But the reason it's been in a lot of these lists is just for Spreading Plague and Giggling Inventor, two of the most prominent cards on ladder right now. And so you kind of really have to respect those cards. And yeah, you're right. Bunny Hopper has just been respecting this explosive trap so much. I'm not quite sure how much longer he can respect it, but maybe he feels as if he doesn't respect it here, that he's going to get ultimately punished by the secrets that uh, Kalento can play. And he knows it's not Rat Trap because the turn that he went, uh, the turn that he went Fungal Enchanter, he played three cards. True. So he's positive it's not Rat Trap. So he knows it's Explosive or Wandering Monster. Oh man, oh man. You know, that's one of the things in Hearthstone, or in any game actually, I would rather, for me personally, I would rather uh, prove myself an idiot than, 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 than allow my opponent 
to prove that they're smart. You know what I mean? Like, if that was a rat <laughs> trap there, if that was a rat trap the entire time, I am so mad. You know what I mean? I'm so mad if that was a rat trap. <laughs> it's like that. Uh, have you ever uh, have you ever missed lethal with like some you know just one of the cards, and instead of you know just playing that card the following <laughs> turn, you decided to hold it for the rest of the game yes. and try and win without it. That's yes. that's that's definitely what happens oh. sometimes. I've I've even lost a game uh, refusing to play that card for lethal <laughs> and just taking the loss. You know what I mean? Like I'll walk away. I'll take this to my grave. Well, not anymore, but um, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. But Bonnie Humper, he, you know the 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 subject nine came down, so Kalento does have access to all of his secrets. So Bunny Hopper, I think it's just getting harder for him now. Nothing's getting easier. This is all uphill from here. Wait, I'm all downhill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really think he's looking for that second fungal enchanter. He finally finds it, wow. and I would not be surprised if now he pushes face damage. I, he I think wants. He's, well, maybe not this select yeah. turn, mm -hmm. but he's definitely going to want to use that to be able to push through and push through a lot of damage on the follow-up. That's the card he's been looking for this entire time. That or maybe potentially Voodoo Doctors to kind of get these minions out of range. True. Or there's also, I guess, the... Isn't there a second Fungal Mancer as well? I think there's a second Fungal Mancer in the deck. I believe deck. there's a second Fungal Mancer as well, so that is another card he'll be looking for. Man, this is the smartest Zulok game I've ever seen in my life. This is a this is what happens when Zulok is put into the hands of a guy with a PhD. <laughs> Yeah, this is um, it's not just all about going face, but you see Kalento, he's going to try and, you know, mitigate some of this. I think Kalento recognizes what Bunny Hopper's game plan is. He's going to try and put a stop to that as much as possible and now contest the board state. Because right now, Kalento, I, I don't think Kalento minds that much if Bunny Hopper just kind of sits there and does nothing. True, yeah. And you know what? Christmas is right around the corner. This year passed by so quickly. And, um, well, Christmas came a little bit early for Kalento this year. <laughs> <laughs> Four secrets. Not the full tree, but uh, it's almost there. So on the fourth day of Christmas, <laughs> Colento gave to me four Timberwolves. Oh, four Timberwolves and? A mossy horror that kills nothing. <laughs> uh, that's kind of like if that's kind of like when you got socks for Christmas, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> as a kid, getting socks was the worst thing. But now as an adult, I'm like, man, I need new socks. Somebody give me money and socks. <laughs> Uh, Venom Strike comes down, so Bunny Hopper intentionally trying to proc the, uh, Venom Strikes. Ven you know, this is a card that I can't say. Venom Strike Snap. Venom Strike. Venom. Venom Strike yeah. Trap. <laughs> Venom. Yeah, that one there. That one there. Intentionally trying to proc it, so. Now you've got me confused. I don't even know what the name of the card is anymore. <laughs> Emperor Cobra. There we go. Uh, Bunny Hopper, like, what is, what is, what is Bunny Hopper's game plan moving forward so i don't think he can potentially outvalue kalento so he's gonna have to try to make the push soon but kalento is still at 31 health Whew. and i think there's about to be some uh, mossy horror on mossy horror action here yeah this is the og mossy horror and the uh stampeding kodo <laughs> uh i'm not quite sure what the other beast is with it it's gonna be something with four man i wouldn't be surprised if it's something like oasis snapdraw just something very large to get played out uh i'm actually not quite sure which one it is can go ahead and tracking first clint is not too worried about fatigue as he's just trying to end this game as quickly as possible i think it's actually the two six taunt the two six taunt whatever that oh part. the stegadon yes and so there you see just uh, such a powerful minion zoo has no real way to deal with you know something as large as this this is where on ladder your opponent would just rip the black knight off the top <laughs> it's like no what are you doing to the black knight in your deck yeah but here bunny hopper's gonna have to get through that so that uh kalento's essentially at what he's at 42 health here that is a lot of health yeah, I'm a little curious to think if Bunny Hopper may have respected that secret a bit too mm. much. I think that's the big thing to look at back on for this game is did Bunny Hopper show just way too much respect to that explosive trap, whereas maybe he should have procced it earlier to try and then amount some kind of board state. It's a very difficult call to make and very difficult to kind of see those plays, but it's something to really go back and look on. Yeah, definitely, because I think over the course of the game, how much damage must he have missed um, from, like, attacking? It must have been at least, like, 20 damage, I think. 
It's from just just from chilling up until turn eight or something. I mean, Bunny Hopper has done so much That's damage cool. to himself. It's, yeah. oh, yep, double kill command is lethal with the beast on board. But Bunny Hopper just kind of, you know, helped Clinto out so much that game. I think Bunny Hopper did 20 of the 30 damage there. Oh, oh my goodness. You know, that's sometimes when you're too smart, you know? you know, Like, you know when you're too smart for your own good? I think that was one of those games. Like, man, that was so intelligent, and I really bought into it, too. I was like, wow, that's really going to pay off for him not attacking. But now looking back, I'm like, yo, just hit face, dude. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if there was a bit too much respect. I, I saw what Bunny Hopper's plan was. He really wanted to draw into that second Puggle Enchanter and then maybe be able to push like 15 damage in one turn to end the game in two turns before Kalento could really amount any kind of pressure. But it ended up kind of backfiring because he didn't really get to the Puggle Enchanter that quickly. And I think Spell Hunter is one of the most confusing decks just because sometimes you're like just killing them on turn four with kill command. Sometimes you're outlasting the control warriors. Uh, and sometimes you're just playing a mid range game where you look like you're in control, then all of a sudden you rip the second kill command off the top and they're dead. Yeah, there's not really uh, much you can do about that. And it goes to show you why you know, Hunter is very powerful in that matchup as it does have a lot of the tools and maybe, you know, maybe a little bit too much respect was given and, you know, gave Kalento just kind of some breathing room. It's going to be interesting to see how Kalento's final deck, the Odd Paladin, performs. That's not a deck we've seen too much. Or Have you been playing the Odd Paladin that much lately or is, you know, is it just a deck of the past that's being brought back again? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Odd Paladin, definitely one of those go-to decks just for... Uh, just for how high the power level is without much thought needed I, to like, uh, you know, to be used in order to play it on ladder, for example. But um, definitely an interesting deck as well. Another one of those decks, another one of those aggro decks that just can play control uh, if necessary. You know what I mean? Like the hero power is the hero power of the Jessicar uh, level up back then. In the past, the mid-range paladins used to use Al value control warriors. So uh, in that sense, the hero power can uh, be used in many different ways. In this matchup, however, um, you basically just don't want to get wrecked by Dreadlord. I think that's your main <laughs> that's your main uh, goal. Yeah, and typically in the past, there, or at least in most recent times, Odd Paladin has fallen off so much in favor of other decks and other classes that the Zulocs have been dropping the Dreadlords because they don't feel as if they really need that minion anymore. But Buddy Hopper actually said, you know what, I think he, th he thought Odd Paladin was going to probably be very prominent in these deck lists. So he actually put two of the Dreadlords in, which is just going to be a huge benefit for him in this particular matchup. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, how that pans out. Typically in the past, I've been told that the Zulok is, you know, fairly favored overall as it does have like one threes and void walker it does have very good value trades along with healing minions back up to constantly make those value trades as we see you know just a prime example in this hand here you can go ahead and play a bunch of one drops take some value trades on the minions and just keep healing them up and taking more yeah it's just how funny how big a void walker is compared to the one ones from the uh odd, from the odd pally because uh, you know, like, compared to those one ones, the, the Void Walker is like a sog off the Slitherer. It's gigantic. You're, you're hitting so many things into it. You're hitting, like, one and a half turns worth of, uh, hero powers into that thing, while your opponent's developing some very efficient threats, uh, behind it. So, very hard to pilot, for sure. Kalento already being faced with the first decision of the game. He has two one drops to play, or he has the potential to coin out a hero power here, making two one ones, making use of that hero power. Yeah, you could do that. I think he's much uh, stronger off by playing out as many cards as possible. Oh. I really like this play from Kalento because he saw that uh, Bunny Hopper uh, kept two and one of them being a Flame Imp if he's tracking the hand. So he's most likely going to assume that the other one kept is something like a Voodoo Doctor because if you kept something like, uh, say, the Void Walker, you would most likely play that on one 
Or even if it was kept and you played the Flame Imp first and a Void Walker was picked up, mm -hmm. you'd be able to kind of, you know, hero pound the following turn and get through a lot of it. So I really like the recognition and going as wide as possible, as quickly as possible, trying to make sure that Kalento has this board state. I think that was a very strong play. He's also got Corridor Creeper, which is just another reason. Man, I mean, kalento has got to be so experienced in this matchup just because the implications of coining out the hero power instead, you get to keep an Arden Squire for later, but you get in one extra hero power. Uh, sorry, the other way around. So you get to get one extra hero power and keep the uh, Squire for later. But he thinks that instead of getting the extra hero power value, I actually want to just get on the board as fast as possible, put down the Divine Shield, set up for potentially the Raid Leader on three, and uh, just take a very strong grasp on the board, leverage it with my Corridor Creeper, and that's how I win the game, not by value. Yeah, and right now, Bunny Hopper, you know, he had a very strong start at the beginning, but he's going to need something to follow it up. He does have Dreadlord, but if Kalento plays it in a way that he has some kind of board state that can answer this Dreadlord, that's really how Paladin gets its win in this matchup, is by being able to counter that Dreadlord with, you know, some kind of board state, even if it does require a little bit of an awkward play on the previous turn. Yeah, and good... Good Paladin players will always will always uh, try to shape their board in a way that it doesn't die to an on-curve Dreadlord. Like, later on in the game, um, as long as not all of your debts dry, die to a Dreadlord, it does cost 5 mana to commit to the board, so... Um, it is definitely worth playing around it, and I think it's very possible. And here, it looks like Bunny Hopper actually is... He does have the board, but it's not as strong of a board as he would hope. Luckily, he didn't have to life tap here because I think the moment you life tap, you're you're falling behind a lot on the board versus an odd paladin. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was a little curious in that trade. I think it was a lot of respect given to... Raid leader, I guess. Uh, even raid leader, though, it's, it's, it's very hard to respect that card because True. if Kalento were to play raid leader, he would still make a trade into say, the 2-2 two, two, and the 3-1. I think what this trade does is if the Raid Leader does come down, it means that potentially the 3-1 lives for an extra turn. Uh, but then it's you know it's kind of interesting because pushing that face damage, although it seems very minuscule now, it, it, you know the 1-1s one are going to be trading into you know that minion anyways. So why, why give your opponent just two free health, essentially? Yeah, that's interesting. And I guess another consideration would be a top deck corridor creeper, because then that would be discounted. That is by true. Two. But for the most part, even though health is the most important resource, like health on your minions is the most important resource in this matchup, because the Kelseth, for example, can kill two things. Um, if Kalento played the Reed Leader, it would have just gotten traded off by the Kobold Librarian. So, uh, again, very interesting decision. And I think it was a little bit. A little bit passive from Bunny Hopper, but um, I can understand the risks that he's trying to uh, avoid here. So Bunny Hopper, he has the Soul Fire if he wants it uh, to try to deal with the Corridor Creeper because again, health is one of the most health on your minions. Health on the board is one of the most important resources. Uh, it, it is the important, the most important resource in this matchup. But um, at what risk? Yeah, I don't really think you can afford <laughs> to discard this uh, this Dreadlord because right now it's it's the way you win the game. But the question is, does Bunny Hopper feel that he is so behind right now that he has to take the 50-50 shot at discarding the Leroy just to get rid of this Corridor Creeper? Because if he curves out with the Dreadlord next turn, Kalento is going to play this in a way that he has an efficient answer for that Dreadlord. Yeah, let's be realistic. Kalento is never playing into... Oh, the Leroy, okay. Le uh, let's be realistic. Kalento is never playing into the Dreadlord here. Never, ever, ever. You know what I mean? Like, if there's any other play, he's going to be making that play. And uh, with some good hand-reading skills, it's pretty clear that his left card is going to be something... Something like... Um, something that's big. Something that's not very, very small. Yeah, I'm kind of curious as to why, you know... I guess Bunny Hopper feels that the Dreadlord is so integral and important to, you know, his game plan that he was willing to discard the 
uh, the voodoo doctor uh, instead of... It increased his odds by a slight percentage, but it it is, you know, worse onto the board, for instance, if you were to discard the Dreadlord. So something uh, something to think about there is I wonder if it was better to, you know, kind of guarantee that that 3-2 was on the board. It ended up working out for him, but definitely a rough call. Definitely. And also, uh, when you're playing against very good players and you see that Bunny Hopper actually play the Voodoo Doctor last, I think that that makes a pretty clear read that that left card is going to be Despicable Dreadlord. Otherwise, well. you're, yeah. Otherwise, you're 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 playing the Voodoo Doctor first every single time. So that's one of the cool things about playing against very good players, in my opinion, is just that in a way they're more readable. If that makes sense, like you can have more faith in their good plays being good, like them not making a mistake. So there being a reason behind uh, every decision, and uh, yeah, and I think that's the case here. Clento's. Probably going to get a pretty strong read. But this Blood Knight off the top is actually ridiculous. A three yeah. mana 7-7. Seven, seven. Jeez. That was uh, that was really strong here. And then he's going to have the Solarium for the future turns to kind of refill. This is looking pretty good for Bunny Hopper right now. That, uh, that calculated risk willing to discard the Voodoo Doctor over the... Uh, over the Despicable Dreadlord, just taking that slight percentage increase is going to pay off a lot here. I actually wouldn't be surprised to potentially see the Stubborn Gastropod get picked up here just so that he can play it in order to try and have some kind of answer for a Dreadlord. I think it's a very smart take. Yeah, not only that, but you know, worst case scenario, it's gonna it's gonna be trading with this uh, relatively big 3-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. So, um, again, Kalento making the pretty hard read that this left card is going to be a Despicable Dreadlord. Uh, there's no real reason to hero power either. So either you're picking a Tyrion that you're going to be playing in three turns, or you're picking a thing that presses the issue right now, and uh, I like it. It's crazy. I, I don't think that this is the normal pick. I think most people would just pick the Tyrion there. So Tyrion's very good as well. But, um, you know, just just play your cards. It's a, it's a one million attack snail you know what i mean if it attacks a creature a minion that snail yeah. can kill anything unless it's silenced then it can only kill one ones but that snail when not silenced <laughs> kills just about everything is this the alexander the great of the no <laughs> i think i think we're way off that topic right now we need to we need to leave it in the past <laughs> okay so a really good pickup there by Bunny Hopper. The Chain Gang, of course, the Chain Gang, whenever it's buffed, is just ridiculous. But here particularly, he gets to protect his uh, Blood Knight from uh, getting wrecked by the Snail. Uh, Kalento has some interesting decisions here. I think that this is about the time that you're going to pick up a big boy. What do you think here? Um, the small thing is kind of repetitive since you have already like an, like a Squire in your hand. So I assume that he's thinking about uh, which of the two big drops he wants, and he seems to value the battle cry of the Primordial Drake over the uh, the the 412 Dragon, the Sleepy Dragon. Yeah, it's also that the Primordial Drake does come down a turn quicker, and yeah. I think that's what Clint is really looking for here, is because if he waits too long, knowing that the Spigable Dreadlord is right around the horizon, if he waits too long on trying to play something, he could fall too far behind. This is interesting that he doesn't attack in here. Um, obviously, it's not great to sacrifice your raid leader, use your raid leader as just a two-attack minion, but did Kalento not make the hard read that this left card here is uh, Dreadlord? I mean, I guess it could also be like Solarium or something like that, Fungal Mancer maybe even. It's hmm. definitely a close call. He's, uh... There, there, there is uh, some merit to putting that minion in just to kind of play around that, especially if you think it's uh, going to be Dreadlord. And maybe Kalento uh, is trying to bait the Dreadlord out, but even that seems quite <laughs> ambitious. Uh, I'm down to take the... I, yo, I'm down to bite, you know what I mean? Like, I'm down yeah. to bite here. That seems great to me. Oh, he attacks with a Blood Knight instead of the Serenai Chain Gang, even though the Chain Gang was pretty clean. Valuing... I think his chain gang is a three three. What differences does a three three make compared to so, a, a three four? The difference isn't that the it would be a it'd be a three two. The biggest difference here is the reason he went oh, for yeah, that man. trade is because of the vine cleaver that was just showed up to be a ten percent draw out. Because if he were to take the trade onto the minion, this Argent Squire would go in, 
He would then kill off the taunt. The Vine Cleaver would then push through onto the Dreadlord, clearing up the Dreadlord and allowing the 1-1s one -one to start getting played and getting Kalento back into this game. Whereas now, there's no real strong answer for the Dreadlord, and it's going to be able to clear up the hero power each turn. The thing about both of these decks is that it's so deceptive to what point who is outvaluing who. You know what I mean? Like right now, it's obviously that Bunny Hopper has the life tap, he has a lot more cards in hand, he has a Solarium. But Kalento has a lot of draws off the top to just put to uh, a, a lot of draws that are so compact in value that just add that can just bring him back. So, like cards, as you said, like Vine Cleaver, cards like um, Level Up. <笑>三个怪其实都要处理就没什么办法 没死呢,两个四过墙了 好,这样的话,我们也是恭喜一下,Bunny 没什么好切的有一个游荡护理荡<笑> 但其实你手里有那个那个什么助力力量祝福加一下键了 I don't know, but uh, I think the lot feeds live, so you're gonna be able to uh, vote along with us on which one do you think is going to be chosen here. 
And I think we're live again. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like potentially the Wandering Monster come out here. It's very bad as it does get traded up into by the Firefly. But you can't really afford to take too much damage. Looks like Bunny Hopper is going for a setup of playing the Venom Strike first. Kind of baiting out, you know, Kalento into attacking. Uh, just to kind of figure out what that secret is. And then can play the Wandering Monster on the follow-up in order to proc and get both minions. Ooh. Again, we, <laughs> you know, Bunny Hopper is on the other side of the uh, the uh, issue now. <laughs> Playing a secret, and again, the secret, depending on what the secret is, it is correct to do different things. But he is going to go ahead and attack. He's not going to be doing what Bunny Hopper is doing. Kalento is showing that he has street smarts, not necessarily a PhD in Hearthstone, but he's got street smarts. Hit him in the face when you can hit him in the face. Yeah, you also thought Bunny Hopper think long and hard on that secret. It's one thing with secrets you can kind of play those mind games with. You can uh, kind of like either, you know, slow roll the secret and make your opponent think it's some kind of explosive. You could also maybe, you know, play it as quickly as possible to make them think one way. <laughs> it's very uh, it's very cool what those, uh, you know, just implications of playing the secret that way really does for you. Oh, it looks like our private stream our private channel got leaked welcome ladies and gentlemen to our leaked stream okay oh well, my God. <laughs> well the secret <laughs> the secret up for bunny hopper uh that is the venom strike trap venom strike trap um yeah so kalento knows kalento knows is not wandering monster he knows it's not freezing he knows it's not explosive trap so at this point from here on out kalento is probably not going to be hitting another minion for the rest of the game yeah, it's... Kalento, uh, I think Kalento's going to be kind of worried about, you know, since he swung in and he was forced to commit the hero power, he may have to respect Explosive Trap in the next couple of future of turns. But it looks like Bunny Hopper, you know, he's just going to go and play that secret. This might make Kalento respect it a little bit, thinking, you know what, if it's Explosive, uh, he can wait a turn, try and get that level up onto the board for the following turn. Divine Favor. Divine Favor is a card that I have not seen in forever, I feel. Uh... I honestly think that it's been maybe over three months since I've gotten Divine Favored. Um, but uh, this card is integral in a lot of matchups. I'm not sure how good it is in this matchup, but the moment your opponent plays Subject 9, you're going to get a full hand with the um, with the Divine Favor. But uh, Kalento, in no real rush, I think, to Divine Favor here. He could play it as just an Arcane Intellect to just draw two. Um, the other problem I see is that if he commits anything to the board here, he is, first of all, he's going to run out of board space, and secondly, he's going to have to attack into the secret sooner or later. So, is it an explosive trap? Well, there's one way to find out. Yeah, Kalanta's going to be very careful here. Uh, the, he could just be very passive and just hear a power and wait for the level up on the next turn. It looks like he's going to go for the route of just, you know, trying to attack through. Curious Glimmer Root is a pretty solid for the three drop select. I think a typical average stats is probably about, say, a three, four, maybe a three, three on average. And that's a cool interaction as well. Hitting the, uh, hitting the Wandering Monster does bring out the Emperor Cobra, the Venom Strike Trap, as they call it. And uh, Houndmaster, Houndmaster being picked up. The problem here is that Bunny Hopper is going to be facing turn five soon. So turn five from Paladin, you got level up, you got Fungalmancer, and both of those are absolutely backbreaking. So uh, Bunny Hopper, how exactly is he going to pilot the game through this turn? Very difficult. I wouldn't be surprised to see potentially coin subject nine uh, because Coin Subject 9, if there's no level up on the following side, would give Bunny Hopper access to Explosive Trap. And mm -hmm. Bunny Hopper really needs something to mitigate this board state. If he lets this thing run rampant, he's going to lose the game. Now, we see the level ups in the hand, and even getting access to that Explosive Trap is not going to help him. But he needs to really make some kind of you know effort towards that play. So I would not be surprised to see Coin Subject 9. Looks like you know Bunny Hopper has different plans, thinks that he can just go ahead and play this out, maybe bait out the level up here. Oh, bait out the level up? I, I think I would take it as well. I would just take the level up here, right? I it's I, I think it's pretty good. You got uh, four 1-1s one on the board. 
Mm, you get pushed a lot of damage to the face. Deathstalker Rexar doesn't really clear you up that much if you um, take some pretty smart trades because the Houndmaster's not getting through either. So I find it really hard for Bunny Hopper to find anything to come back here. I think it's going to have to be like back to back draws, something like um, Deathstalker Rexar into an explosive trap maybe for uh, Bunny Hopper to stabilize. Yeah, I really like this level up here, because even if Rexar were on the other side with the coin, right now Kalento is just pushing way too much damage, and the raid leader would even push more on the follow-up, almost giving Kalento lethal right off the bat. Oh, and we can ooh, oh the Deathstalker Rexar off the top! Okay, that that's part one of the that, that is, is a very strong draw, but I mean, Kalento is still pushing a lot of damage. He's going to be able to push, I believe, 10 on the follow-up, putting Bunny Hopper down to just 6 health, and then has that refill with the Divine Favor. Okay, so he thinks that he can maybe get a Misha here, followed by maybe an Eaglehorn Bow from the hand to, to try to to try to get a grasp back on this board state. And I, I really that... like that play. I, I, I think it, it seems very strange at first, but I, I like it because if it's Huffer, you take away more damage Ooh, than the oh. Rexar would do, and you can try and set it up in a way that you clear up more minions with this bow and can potentially use the Rexar on the following <sighs> turn. So I really like that play from Bunny Hopper. He's showing some restraint when it comes to that Rexar because it is not, you know... Wow. that beneficial that turn. That was extremely clean, and Kalento does have the opportunity to push some damage here. That is going to be five damage pushed if Kalento so chooses to take it. However, that does mean that his board state afterwards is going to be demolished by either an Explosive Trap or the Deathstalker Rexar that Bunny Hopper just drew this turn. So it looks like he is going to go for... Oh, he's going to trade in the small boys. That plays really around like the Deathstalker Rexar. This is very strong. The Deathstalker Rexar will be able to give Bunny Hopper five life, enabling him to be able to swing into this, you know, last Silver Hand recruit. And the one nice thing about how this has panned out is that even after the Rexar, Bunny Hopper will be able to play Subject Nine, get Explosive Trap, survive yet another turn or another wave of one ones, and then get the Spellstone and start trying to amount some kind of pressure. Oh, that. Oh my goodness, I thought that was a vine cleaver off the top of turn <laughs> seven. That scared the living bejesus out of me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry guys. Oh. Okay. The uh, the Chinese production just, just <laughs> trolled us with that one. We... <laughs> like, you know sometimes when the card comes off the top and you slam it so fast that the size of the card changes? Oh, I thought that's what happened. <laughs> that terrified me. Kalento. He's in a rough spot, as he said. Wait a second. Bunny Hopper's guaranteed to get Explosive Trap, right? Guaranteed to get it. He is. I I'm actually a little curious as to why Kalento didn't go for the Righteous Protector. Because if the Righteous Protector was alive, it would actually give an out to uh, Divine Favor into Blessed Maul. And Blessed Maul could find the attack. Uh, attack. Is there something... I'm missing here. Maybe there is no explosive, and I'm just, you know, not thinking about this straight. Was explosive played I, earlier, and we're no, just forgetting it about wasn't. it? It wasn't. No. Whoa! So he just really doesn't have explosive trap in his deck. Oh my goodness. I guess that is makes that sense. Is that what it is? I, I think that's... No, there is an explosive trap in the list. I mean, maybe it was played earlier, and we are just oh. neglecting to remember it because we got so excited. I don't think it was played. I don't think it was played earlier. Are you sure? I just don't remember. I have a hard time imagining a, uh, a turn where Explosive would have been played, but Kalento wins, and all of his fans watching here in the stream, I hope you guys enjoyed watching 